Jason Ten from University of Houston's Bauer College of Business Administration of Computer-Based MIS course offered by Carl Scott. I am Stephen Jordan and we're here to present to you today about Hofstetter's Lab. So again, I'm Stephen Jordan. I'm Jackie Chen. Charlie Lee. And we're happy to present this topic to you. Now we're going to move forward. On the agenda, we have what is Hofstadter's Law? Why is Hofstadter's Law? How does it work? And then a conclusion, wrapping it all together for you so that hopefully you can better understand how Hofstadter's Law works and how it applies to the IT world. So what is Hofstadter's Law? Well, it's part of Douglas Hofstadter's 1979 book, Gold Escher Bach, an internal, an internal golden grave, a self-referencing time-related adage. Hofstetter's law is, it always takes longer than you expect, even when you take into account Hofstetter's law. Uh, basically, it's, the law states that it's a little more complex to estimate time uh, based on the complexity of tasks. It was also used in the early days of chess playing computers. Uh, computer, uh, chess champions would repeatedly beat computers on a regular basis, and they made an estimate that uh, it would take 10 years or so before a computer would beat a uh, champion in a chess game. Um, due to recursive nature of the law, it just makes it very complex as far as estimating the time that a task would be able to be completed, even though with the known complexity associated with it. Okay, why does it matter to the IT world? Let's take a look at uh, some statistics. If you, we have a uh, best in time estimate, we have a soft time frame. And then if we go to the next one, which is the average speed time estimate, and then the worst time estimate, and the worst case estimate plus the taking into account of Hofstetter's law and the uh, actual time, you can see that it acts the value of the time actually doubles for every rows. So, and let's take a look at the IT project successful rate of 2010. As you can see, the ad hoc project has 49% of successful rates, and the next one is the literative project, which has 61% of successful rate. Agile project has 60%, and the traditional project has 40%, 47% of successful rate. Now, we believe that the uh, iterative projects that you see the higher success rate with are because they have a chance to produce the activity over and over. So they're going to see their problems early on. And the more times you ran a series of, of uh, projects, the better you're going to become at it each time. So efficiency increases your overall success rate. And that's what we were seeing in those past two graphs. So adaptive and iterative uh, project management uh, abilities allow the project to be process of development, it, everything gets breaking down into development, into smaller sections of development, and basically they become, in every two weeks, a sprint or iteration is delivered, and the development of the project will change accordingly to how everything is progressing or how everything is adapting to the environment around itself. So it gives a chance for the team to adapt according to the environment based each sprint or iteration. So we have ways that you can look at uh, better estimating your your project. To um, so better estimate the time and budget. You want to you want to identify your goals. If you don't start your project with a solid goal uh, goal in mind, you don't want it to be vague. You you need to have specifics because it's hard to obtain things when they're in a, a vague conceptual form. But uh, what you need to determine is what what are the core key, core key functionalities for your particular project. What is it? What are the mechanisms by which you're trying to reach your goal? Uh, optional features have to come after those things. You have to have specific goals, and you need to know what your core key functions are. And then you can worry about optional features. And then you've always got to consider on a project that as things change throughout the different processes you might be using, you're going to run into areas where you may need to cut features. You have to know which features are able to be cut and which ones are core or key functions that you otherwise can't displace or get rid of. And then you need to use additional resources. Project teams often get lost in the need to work within themselves and nobody else. And sometimes it is very necessary to reach outside and get the extra help you need to ensure that you can be successful in your particular IT project so that you don't end up on the larger side of those uh, percentage rates for uh, failed projects. 
Now this 